this is early, right? This plan next week. Is that enough? I had enough of this? Yeah, still healthy. Did you have any two weeks longer? What are you doing? Yeah, that's good. I'm just looking at the I'm not saying that's not right to anyone. Yeah, yeah. 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 to marketing planning and things like that. And social media is really important for what we're, we're incorporating. One of the reasons being, and this is something that a lot of agents that I work with, we tend to we tend to forget is that we are in the we are in the business. I tell my own officers this too all the time. We're in the business of making friends, right? Um, a lot of the people that we work with, why do they work with us? Because they like us, right? Like us. And one of the things that we tend to forget about is the fact that we need to continue that relationship the transaction, correct? So we need to be making sure that we are friending our clients, friending the people that we work with on social media, because one of the great things that we can do with this, with these different platforms, is connect and engage, nurture, meet new folks, and then improve the customer relationship, right? Or customer experience, excuse me. So. You can utilize it a few different ways from a lean nurturing and sales, um, but we can also increase brand awareness. So it's just another tool. I always just like to start out with that. Sometimes people tend to think that social media is and all but it's not. There's still a lot of other of the traditional things that we need to do. You shouldn't be negating like phone calls or text messages on someone's birthday. You shouldn't be negating Popeyes 
people still really enjoy those when those happen. Um, so I actually had a friend of mine recently post on Facebook a pot pie that they got from their real estate agent, just something that was left on their porch, and they it was just like a little wreath, little Christmas wreath, and they were just like, oh, this is awesome. They were like really excited about it. So things like that um, can be helpful. So one of the big questions that I always get is how much time, and this is something for you guys too to start considering as you start to plan for 2019, is how much time should I be spending on my marketing, right? Um, and the first thing that I was I'm going to show is this chart on um, social media. So how long do you guys think people spend on social media? In their lifetime. In their lifetime. Oh. Two years. <laughs> Two years, months. Two hours. How much time? Years. A lot. Years. The reality is it's five years and four months. Oh my gosh. That's how much time people are spending online. Yeah, because we're dragging down the curve. That's <laughs> <laughs> old, old folks, yeah. 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 So we have, this is actually kind of changing a little bit. Um, Instagram's probably taken over a little bit of Snapchat. This is from 2017, so that number is probably already adjusted. But to put that in, in perspective, teens spend about nine hours a day on social media. How? No, not nine hours. Nine, nine hours. Surprise. Yeah. Surprise. Right? It's like a full-time job. Right? Um, but 30% of all of that action is allotted to, in, to interacting. Okay. What do you guys typically do when you're when you're online? On like Facebook or Instagram. Good on the rabbit hole. Good on the rabbit hole. Do you actually like click like and comment on things or are you scrolling? Right. Comment. I do like yeah. comment. Yeah. Comment. Yeah. Yeah. Comment. Yeah. Yeah. I look for places to start a conversation. And that's how we should be utilizing it, right? A lot of and so that interaction piece is really crucial. Another big thing too is that a lot of it's spent on mobile, mobile device, and I'm actually going to talk to you guys about that further on in this. Is how we can use our phones to kind of make things a little bit easier for ourselves. Um, and then, 64% of marketers are spending six hours or more. Well, that's not really too too essential for you guys right now. Um, but when you start planning for 2019, there's a few different things that I want you guys think about and how you start to utilize your digital presence and, and how you're going to be incorporating it. And one, you know that it's there to increase brand awareness and build relationships. And if you're not doing a competitive analysis at all, I highly recommend that when it comes to how you start planning and, and, and how you do your marketing. And that's going to be twofold. One, it's going to show you maybe not what not to do, but why would we do something like, why would we continue to reinvent the wheel when somebody else may have already done it, right? So we can learn a lot from what other people are doing. And I'm not just talking about people who are in town, but other people in your field, people who are doing things that you like, or maybe they just have a style or they share things or maybe they even have print materials that you really like. Think about ways that you can incorporate that into your own marketing. Um, I actually just saw on Facebook, um, one of our loan officers left and went to another company. But he, their new hire graphic looked eerily similar to the one that we already had. So it's, it's yeah. yeah, people end up mimicking what it is that they like, right? So for you guys, um, that can be something that you incorporate. Um, and then also another thing we're going to want to work on too in 2019 is upping referrals and reviews. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, do you guys ask for reviews at yes. all at the end of the transaction? Yes. Where do you ask for them on the written form? You have a written form? We actually send out a letter to each buyer and seller uh, that's hand signed by me with a return envelope. 
And it also has links to the Zillow and Realtor.com that they can go online to as well. Have you guys been measuring the success rate of that as far as like who's going to Zillow and stuff like that? Not very many. Not very many. I can tell you that. No. I heard it online. And so, almost keeps out. so one thing, one thing that we're going to want to make sure that we are are incorporating more is those online reviews because people do take them seriously. So you want to get reviews on Facebook, Zillow, Google. If Realtor.com or Trulia are big in this area, those as well, um, or at least one of those. Yeah, Brittany, what we learned a few weeks ago when Realtor.com is here is that there is a, you can actually copy and paste in the recommendation section of Realtor.com. So if somebody goes online and searches by recommendations, depending on how many you have, you can literally show up at the top, even though, whereas Zillow, they have to put them in themselves. Yeah, that's nice. That's nice that you guys can do that. So if you have them on Zillow or something like that, so Realtor.com, then I wouldn't, I wouldn't focus on as much. But Zillow, Google, and Facebook are the three big ones. So, so is there one place they can go to do it and then you can copy and paste it? That's the problem. <laughs> that's, that's the information. So like there are a lot of third party sites like Social Survey, one that we use. Um, um, there's another one that's escaping me right now that's in our industry. Um, you know, if they write it, excuse me, this is one of the main questions I've been asking today mm -hmm. in the training, um, because I get a bunch, but I only had very few, and I wanted to be able to capture more. The written one, I believe you have to check a box saying that we can socially, publicly use this review. Yeah, we have a check mark that says, yes, you can use it. So now we can, Type that in and put it in all the sites. You can do it as a post. You're not going to be able to leave it as a native review. So real quick on reviews, there's two different kinds. There's what's known as native reviews, native. and then there's what's you known, and then there's just like shared reviews and things like that. A native review is when someone actually goes to that site. Like you go to Amazon, okay, and you leave a review for a product that you purchased, right? It lives on that site. But if you were to take a review that someone had else had written and try to put it on Facebook, let's say in your review section, it's not going to work. The only way you're going to be able to share it is as a Facebook post. Right. So Facebook. that's on Facebook, on Facebook, right? You cannot call share. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's not like you're going to be able to say, okay, I got this little review and I want it to be a Facebook review that affects the number of stars and ratings that I have. It doesn't work like that. That individual would have to go be logged into their Facebook account, go to your Facebook business page, and fill it out. So Facebook stays within Facebook. Exactly. So here's the thing. There is a work, like, one thing that you can do is create an email signature. This is, an easy, this is a, a relatively easy mix for you guys, but just something to start incorporating into your marketing for, for next year. And at the end of every transaction, just create an email signature in Outlook or Google, Gmail, whatever it is that you're utilizing that asks for a review. And at the bottom of your signatures, put check out my reviews and just have the little icons. And I can just, oops, oops, sorry, I didn't see that I did not. I'll actually show you guys in my own email signature. I guess I've ever gotten. Um, well, if you're looking for that too, you understand you can do that same thing. You can click on here and use the agent profile because Chris, every survey that comes in, Chris posts that on your own agent profile. So you put that URL at the bottom, click on there, check my reviews, I can go right to your profile and your reviews are there. Yeah. If the other thing too, but they can, even though it's not native, then one thing you can do is you can have a review, you can put it in a Word document or whatever, a copy and paste, but you can put it in Facebook, it won't show up as a review, but you can put it in. Thanks to my client such and such, yep. and paste it into your own and tag business page, and then tag that person, and then that person, you know, can share that out, that kind of thing. So you, you're not getting the review, but you're getting the press. Right. 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 As long as you have their approval. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So, um, like in, on my on my email signature, I have connected me on because for all my new hires and and those people, it's, I'm trying to keep friendly and. Add me on LinkedIn and things like that. So I just have the little icons. You can download those from Google. I just do a Google image search for like Facebook logo or 
like and logo. And then, you can, and then you have to link it. Yeah, and then I just click on. Um, all you have to do is right click on the photo, and then add, add a hyperlink. Oh, just that. This time. is, oh, yeah, that's that. Right. It's, it's, it's really, right. It's so I'm going to be in about four hours. No, it's not. Can you go back and show it again, please? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, I've already done this one, so it keeps every time I try. So, you right click on it? Yeah. So, if you right click on it, oh, you get it'll pop up with hyperlink, and you would just click that and you would paste the link in it. And so then people can just click on that icon and it will take them to there. So you would just add it as an image in your email signature. Um, and I'm, and you can do that. It is a little bit different on a PC than a, than, than, um, than a Mac, like where you go to get them. So on a, on a Mac, you would do that under options. Um, or on a PC, you would do that under options. On a Mac, you would do that under preferences. Okay. Chris help me with that. Just like yeah, that, right? so Chris can help if you utilize him. He's a great resource for you guys here. Okay, so, ooh, battery almost looked like that. So, things are going to be incorporated, reverse. Right? What's the difference between a review and a referral? Or review, sorry. A review and a referral. A referral is when somebody would recommend one, one you. Recommends you. Review is somebody says it goes and says, I like this person. Mm -hmm. I had a terrible experience. Oh, that's not Okay. <laughs> so but as far as social media, it's all review. That's a referral is just simply just yeah. yeah. It, it, I would use that as a realtor. So so like uh, but you can't get a referral on social media, but like you cannot. Can you? Yeah. So Here's, here's an example of how you can get a referral on social media. Let's okay. say Judge Schmo is looking for a realtor and posts on Facebook. Just give her recommendations with a realtor. And then your friend, Brittany Tour, goes and says, Oh, you're in Charlottesville. You should work with at Bevan or at Yana. And I tag you in the post. That's basically me giving you a referral if you don't want to. Provided that you. Yeah. Yeah. Good job on the experience. All of us are going to have 12 on the other realtors. Although you'd be surprised how few people pay attention to those kinds of things and miss out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I had a friend do that um, when she was trying to figure out what she was doing with her life. And um, I didn't see a single real estate agent post on it. Very smart. Mm -hmm. Not one. It could be her friend group. She was one of my real estate agent friends, but I find it very hard to believe in this day and age. Okay. So, um, when you're planning, if, I'm, I'm talking about social media mostly right now, but later on, I'm going to go into some of the other things that we want to be incorporated. But when you're planning for 2019 and you're trying to think about, okay, well, where is my time best spent? And where, as far as like my social media presence, from a real estate perspective, it's always going to be Facebook and Instagram, at least right now. And the reason being is those are the two most utilized platforms by the club, by the two largest home purchasers right now. Boomers. Not LinkedIn. Not LinkedIn. No. no. It's not like surprising. It's not LinkedIn, though. Yeah. So with LinkedIn, it really does depend on, on your sphere of influence, right? LinkedIn is very popular among boomer men, but we tend to look at it as just from a sales perspective. LinkedIn is primarily used for people looking for jobs or to talk to other people in their industry to get news and kind of um, connect with kind of like a, you know, like you guys would go to car in person. It's like the virtual version of car. A lot of people trying to, to work within their own industry and meet new people and network in that capacity. But from a sales perspective, unless you're in B2B sales, it's not that helpful. Like you're trying to figure out, okay, I need to sell, you know, eight things of, you know, milk. milk. Yeah, right. I'm trying to sell like eight things of milk to the to BC to BCU to UVA's um, 
I want to say commissary, but I know that's not right. But to their dining, dining hall. <laughs> God, I'm getting old. But to their dining hall. <laughs> we're really old. <laughs> yeah. I like commissary. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but I'm going to tell them to their, to their dining hall. So I need to figure out whoever's in charge of that. Reach out to that person because I don't know that person personally. Does that make sense? So LinkedIn is not as social as or as, as broad range. It's not as broad range. It's very, um, it is very niche, and who it is that you're talking to now. Where LinkedIn does come into play is if you were in another industry before, and then you moved into real estate. So I work with a lot of folks up in Northern Virginia who used to be in the government, and are now real estate agents. Guess where a lot of their business comes from through LinkedIn. It comes from other government officials that still work there and worked in their particular branch mm -hmm. or their particular area, right? So I have the same thing happen with people who are in the healthcare industry. They maybe they need to do health sales or medical sales, medical supply sales. Now they're in real estate. They still have those contacts, and so mm -hmm. LinkedIn works well for them in that capacity. But for the average human being, the average real estate agent, LinkedIn is not that useful. I'm a, I'm a little bit different animal because I work for the but mm -hmm. I've, I've got over 2,700 connections on LinkedIn, and I'd say probably 50% of the ones. Or And 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 guess who's not going to be buying these instructions? On mm -hmm. Right, but they may have a customer. They may. Right. And I'm not I'm not negating that it's a place to post. But you will find most real estate agents are not very active on LinkedIn. The majority of real estate agents are active on Facebook. Yeah, the, the one pushback I would say, or one place that I think LinkedIn does help you, is it does it can create an electronic resume for you. Yes. So that when you're you've got a client or you're you know say you're working at a geographic neighborhood and you're putting out a letter, you can say check click here to uh, to go to my LinkedIn site, and then you have control over what you're communicating to people as the type of realtor you are, where you specialize, those kind of things. For example, for me, uh, you know, you all know that I teach as well as, uh, as do what I'm doing. And and I've used LinkedIn to, to uh, when I talk to an uh, association about whether you teach GRI or whatever, yep. I'll send my LinkedIn um, uh, site because it has recommendations for people that have taken my classes. Yep. And they'll say, you know, blah, blah, blah about whatever. And I can actually ask people, hey, go to my site and, and would you, you know, thank you for your kind comments. Would you put those on the LinkedIn site? So I use it that way. I don't use it as a, I use Facebook in the way that Britain's talking about. I use Instagram more from a personal standpoint. But the LinkedIn is really about electronic resume yeah. uh, that I can send out. Yeah. So from a standpoint, as, as we age and we're getting more and more millennials and single women that are becoming basically buying the biggest group of people that are going to be buying here in the near future is that that's where we're focusing on LinkedIn right because that's where they're going 40 percent of millennial women take brands seriously on LinkedIn 40 percent of millennial women <coughs> that's the demographic that you're trying to reach Instagram is your best place they take it seriously they take it seriously but they're 40 percent Right, 40% mm -hmm. not so bad. Amazingly, and oh, well, that's good. It's amazing. <laughs> My kids, all they ever do is make fun of me when I'm on Instagram. I'll be honest with you, I have no idea. I, I, I'm sure I'm, I have an infancy in terms of how you use it. I use it just to find entertaining bits of information yeah. and photos. How do you actually utilize it? I'm going to talk about, well, I have a lot of questions. So are you going to go through each one of these? And I'm going to go through Facebook and Instagram, but Instagram I can actually spend a little bit more time in it to pull in as many of those kinds of um, slides, but I'll talk to you guys about it. Okay, that's great. Yeah. Okay, so when it comes to planning, right, we always just want to get one thing that I recommend that you guys do for within your marketing plan is always make sure that you put in a schedule. Why do we want to schedule what we're doing? Close your calendar. Yeah. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I live and die by my calendar. Yeah. If it's not on the calendar, it doesn't happen. Put the blood for time. Yeah. 
So for you guys, mark your calendar, set a meeting, whether it's weekly, daily, however you want to do it, just so that you don't forget. And then also, we're going to talk about strategy, but also create a content calendar. Content calendars can be really helpful for you guys because you don't have to worry about you know, what am I going to post today. It's kind of already laid out. So I'm going to show you guys what I mean by that. So the content calendar, you can create a weekly, monthly, yearly. Um, I can show you guys one that I am currently working on too for, for my for my loan officers. But it's kind of like your content cheat sheet. Okay, of what am I doing this week, month, whatever. Um, and then you can use it for curated and creative content. Now, what I mean by curated content, stuff you find on the internet, articles, GIFs, couple photos, um, use the letter for real estate for funny stuff. Creative content is going to be, oh, I took this photo, or oh, I took this video. Um, I have a listing I need to post. So for you guys, one thing that I recommend is just go ahead and bookmark the sites that you frequently use for content, because that just makes it easier for you to find it. Um, on your, and I'll show you guys, I can show you guys that too. And then also you can use Pinterest boards. Mm -hmm. So you can create like a, a quote, like a motivational quote, um, Pinterest board that you can, this is for those of you that, that do like Pinterest, or you can just have stuff that you can then later share to your Facebook business page or, or what have you. But you can also use something like this, where it's you just have like a weekly outline of what it is that you are probably going to want to post about. So Monday motivation, um, get those things, or notice that a lot of motivational content happens on Mondays. Um, but Tuesday, just entertainment, trending content, things that are popular happening right now. Um, Wednesday, you can do industry or local news. Thursday. You could do some sort of contest or poll or another set of quotes or quizzes or something like that. Friday, your testimonials. Saturday, um, open houses that are up or a, a listing perhaps. And then Sunday, I'm not just real estate professional, so something that's like fun, a little bit um, about who you are as a person, not just what you do. So one thing I will tell you guys in 2019, trying to think sell too hard on their social media accounts, yeah. right? A lot of agents are focused solely on listing, 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 open houses, open houses, open houses, work with me, work with me, work with me, right? Mm -hmm. The more passive you are in your sales strategy, the more success you will see, especially when it comes to your social media presence. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just an example of a, um, a content calendar that you can use. You can just have have like the day of the week, um, the topic, any links that you may need, what channels you're posting it to, and who your target audience is. So what that then looks like um, is like I put my photo in there, so I can just copy that. I'm going to put that on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. That's just general audience. Um, because I did this one on Valentine's Day, so um, Valentine's Day is ideas around town, so just links to restaurants and fun stuff too. A Valentine's little funny um, photo, changes in the stock market can affect home buying, that's an article that is really just generated with other agents and my sphere of influence. Um, on Friday, I did a client photo and a quote, so that's like a, a review that I got. Mm -hmm. You can do it that way. Saturday, live video for an open house. Sunday, I have more to do Right? And so when you would do this, you would post this across your, the gamut of social media. So I have them for different ones, okay. right? So like Facebook, LinkedIn, okay, Instagram. Yeah, I got this it. one I just did on Facebook, Valentine's Day one I did on Facebook and Instagram. This one, LinkedIn and Facebook. The testimonial I did on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Open House Live, Facebook, and Instagram. 
Danny Offerman. Perfect. Okay, I didn't, I didn't see that yet. Thank you. Yeah. Because not everything is going to be suitable for every platform, right? A link to Valentine's Day ideas around town. One, you can't really share a link on Instagram. Two, do you think people on LinkedIn are going to hear about that? Yeah. Yeah. It's just a person. Do you have a business and a personal, or do you just have one thing to say? So my Facebook pages are all tied to Movement Mortgage. So I, on a personal level, do not have one. Okay. I just utilize my personal Facebook. I use the Movement Mortgage as a personal Facebook page. Just put Valentine stuff and stuff like that. So this would all be stuff that I would put on a business page, though. Okay. That was the bigger question. Yeah. And well, so you can tag yourself on a business page, but by, you cannot invite the person. You can't tag your business on your personal page. Correct? No, you can tag your business on your personal page. I'll show you guys that when okay. we're going to do one on one. But like, this could go either way. Yeah, you're right. But yeah, like, yeah, yeah. But like it, it's just, I this is for like the business page that I make this. That's not to say that some of the, per, like on my personal, I would put like, what me and my boyfriend did on Valentine's Day, right? Not a funny little, you know, fake val like Valentine's Day card. You do a picture of your bottle yeah. wine and rose. Yeah, exactly. Or like whatever it is that we're doing. Right? Which is probably going to be nothing because that's what we usually do. Am I hearing you correctly that passive is also kind of meaning humanizing? The whole thing a little bit and make it a little bit more personal. Yeah. I have to find very protective over my part. I mean, and you know, I know you're not talking about that. But I, I mean, I'm not that type of person that just shares a lot of personal stuff on Facebook. So I'm, and by I'm personal, I'm not talking about like airing your dirty laundry, right? Yeah, or like talking about your kids all the time and things like that. It can still be related to work, but rather than it being just a a link to a listing, have it be a photo of you at a listing appointment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. The more that you put your, like, you guys as the agent are your best asset, and even better than that is what you're doing for your clients. Mm -hmm. Because guess what? We, it's not about us. Who's it about? Always okay. about them. But is it the same as, like, on Google, when I post something, like, on the website, and Instead of just posting the link, mm -hmm. I wrap words around it, you know, so I'll have my own stuff in front of it, click on this link, and then some stuff in it, so that Google searches that differently than if you're just copy and paste the link, because they know that's what you're doing. Does it, Facebook do that same thing for you? Does it help? So that does help with Facebook apps. Yeah. They no always thing. prefer, Facebook always prefers when there's some sort of personal touch added, right. because it's not just like a uh, typically, when that happens, it's a third party, so they leave that a little bit differently. Then why do you suppose it is that Facebook prefers the personal? Because that's why it was created. Yeah. Just so you guys know, Facebook was created to like add to Harvard so that other Harvard kids could meet each other. Find dates. Well, if it's a Zuck, you find dates. Well, but it's, it's, you know, the whole purpose of it is so that, like, people can interact with each other, which is why the business pages don't always perform as well, right? Which is why we need to focus on our personal as well. We have to engage with people. It can't just be, oh, I'm going to set this and forget it. You, there's no setting and forgetting when it comes to your social when any, any of your marketing, really. Because it just doesn't work then. And so, would you say, and this is, I guess, maybe a rhetorical question. Maybe I, I think I know the answer. If you're on Facebook, you know, I do find, I, I follow a bunch, of, I have a bunch of friends in the real estate business. I get a lot of their listings, right? They put big mm -hmm. posts. And I will say, I, I scroll through them pretty quickly and it kind of gets overwhelming. Mm -hmm. if, they, if they were to provide con more like informative content about the business market, I think I find that more interesting and probably more impactful on how I view them and if I just saw their product. Does exactly. Yeah. So, but it, you have to know your audience, right? Like you as a real estate agent, that's going to be important to you. Or if it's someone who is, you know, 
a numbers person, right? That'll be relevant to them knowing how the market's doing and things like that. But if you're just, you know, an average human being that happens to be friends with that person, like if I were friends with an, an agent, and I say this all the time because I'm friends with a lot of a lot of you guys. But the content that I typically tend to engage with is when I see that you've had a closing, right? Mm -hmm. Like you've had a win. Daisy's in my arms. Or a hotel company. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Or it's got a dog or it's something that's, that's not a listing. Right? It's a success. It's something mm -hmm. that you've achieved, that you've done. Thank you. Well, we're going back to what Bob said, I think it's really important because where Facebook can really help you as well is, you know, we talk all the time here about building rapport, gaining credibility, showing people who care. That's what this is right here. Yeah. You're building rapport, you're gaining credibility by the things that you're talking about and things you're bringing to people's attention, and you're showing them the care. And 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 the whole aspect of showing the care may not be posting happy birthday on their page. Because everybody does that. Hey, it may be just private messaging them so that they're getting it differently. Or you know their cell phone, so you text them, or you actually write them a note uh, using that Facebook as a, as a conversation. But the other part, Bob, going back to what you said, is it, the way that people do it, if you sit down and have coffee with one of those people, you already know a lot about them if you follow them on Facebook. I mean, there's no doubt that people know I'm a person of faith. So if, if I'm interacting with them, and we sit down for coffee. That that's already. Yeah, I, know when, I know when I sit down, I try to watch my language. <laughs> right, well, but you understand what I'm saying. I, there's all right. If that's something that's that, that causing your problems, well, then they're not going to interact with you, yeah, right? Yeah. But if, if when you're meeting a client and a, or a friend and you're getting a referral from them or whatever, there's a good chance when you sit down for coffee, they already have a pretty good idea of who you are, what you are about, how you go about doing your business. And, and they've chosen that. So it's that being part of that conversation and making sure that whatever it is you're communicating, you're comfortable with. It. Yep. You know? We all stalk each other on the internet. I actually asked, um, I actually asked some, some agents that I work with, like how they utilize social media. And one of the biggest things that they said is I use it to stalk people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, everybody does do that. Yeah. Everybody does it. Well, I, but, you know, I get a lot of people who post stuff that I would never, I mean, they wear me out. I got a sister that wears me out with the pictures of her kid. So, you know, I can't imagine interacting. Yeah, taking, follow, right? taking, oh, I understand, but I can't imagine taking that approach, which is the civilian, I'll call it the civilian approach of promoting your lifestyle with business. I mean, it, one, that's what this one is, is. is overwhelming. So, you know, you, you got you to bring balance though, right? I hate to say it, but the real estate business is a lifestyle business. That's what people are buying into. Whenever somebody's buying a house, they're not necessarily just buying a property, they're not buying the shell. They're buying the idea of a home and they're buying the idea of the lifestyle that comes with a home. They're buying what they see on apartment therapy. Like, the, the house is the box, the gifts inside. The yeah. Exactly. So for you guys, like when people are, 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 are working with you, they are they are buying into that. They're buying into you and they're buying into the American dream, more or less, right? So that's what we are selling. We're not selling the box. We're selling what's inside of it and all the meaning behind that. So we have to be incorporating a little bit of it. Now that's not to say that like your content's not going to be just one-sided, right? So Moving on, we want to make sure that we have consistent branding. Across. If you haven't done this yet, make sure that in 2019 you build yourself some sort of idea of branding. And by branding, I'm not necessarily saying like, okay, like I'm going to be a Kardashian and that's going to be my lifestyle, right? No. We just want to make sure that we have. Make sure that you have a professional headshot that is current. Okay. And if you have the option, take it outside. Don't do like the school porch, like, all right, I'm in fifth grade again and I gotta get my hair done just right, like over here to the side. We're just gonna stand in the natural, like that, right? Out it's so they've done research on this, but um professional headshots that are taken outside tend to perform better. 
Um, so if you have that as an option, do that. Think more like high school photo shoot, like senior senior pictures, not so much third grade. Okay. When it comes to your to your headshot. Okay. So <laughs> utilize utilize that. I just remember that being really cool, and I wasn't allowed. Like my mom and dad, like actually got me like the cheapest costume <laughs> senior pictures, and they were terrible. So my brother and sister got the nice ones where they were all like outside of the poses and stuff. Oh, like mom and baby. Yeah, yeah, and they like look great, and have, like every freaking one. Um, so make sure that you've gotten a, a new professional headshot. And then also make sure that you have created um, this. Make sure that your username on all of your social media for work is the same. So if you are are at Brittany Turner Realtor, that's what it needs to be on my Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, all that kind of stuff. For you guys, I always want to tell you when it comes to your username. Make sure that it's your first, like your first and last name is incorporated in it, or that in your name somewhere for your business related things that there is the word realtor. I tried to find, I was working with a real estate agent, I was doing some pre preemptive stocking of them to kind of for our consultation and figure out what they were doing. I couldn't find her on the internet because guess what her name was? Sarah Smith. Do you know how many Sarah Smiths there are anymore? And she did not have the word realtor anywhere on her professional account. I couldn't find her on Instagram because I couldn't figure out which one she was. Right. Right. So you always want to make sure that it's easy for people to know I found the right person. Because if they're recommended to you by somebody, guess what they're gonna do? They're not gonna look for they're not gonna look for Roy Wheeler. Right? They're gonna be you know, Michael. But if they've been recommended a human being's name, they're going to be looking for that human being, right? Well, like, also, also, just the key of a photo. Mm -hmm. I mean, how many times do you search something, you get one of those little no, uh, photo low, things. Very they believe Sarah Smith that she has a photo, and yeah. people know yeah. who she is. Right? If, you've, if you've met her before, right? right? That's helpful. You've got a chance. Yeah. So for you guys, photo. Consistent name because it also makes it easier for Google and other things to, to log you. And then also come up with some branded hashtags. Yes, ma'am. Um, for Facebook, I have my maiden name in there, or Cinnamon Kelly, because we have a whole lot of high school, um, a whole bunch of our high school class got on and some college. And that's kind of important, but it wouldn't. That's why I said to use that consistently. No, 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 no. On your personal Facebook, that's fine. Whatever your personal Facebook is, is, is your personal Facebook. This is I'm just talking about it from the business perspective, so for your business page, um, for Instagram too. And with Instagram and things like that, it doesn't have to be in your like you can, your username. My username on everything is at the trend across the board. But in my bio, it says that I work at Newton Mortgage. Right? So it is somewhere in that entity. Right? Say that again, please. Like, aren't most usernames your email address? That's for your login. So for your username on like a social media account. <laughs> so like, here's the question. So here, I'm facebook.com slash bntrim. That is my Facebook username. Okay. And, and you picked that name or did Facebook pick it? I picked that. Okay. On Twitter, I am at the And Bob, I think I'm on Instagram, I am at the Trim. So no matter where, if you search the on the internet, I'm going to pop up. Or if you search my name, it's always going to be associated with that at the So that's because that's my user. We were good at Brittany. Any of us were looking. We were looking for Brittany. We yeah, looking. you're gonna look for you're gonna look for Brittany Trimmer, yeah. right? So here's my name. That's my username. So if I go to edit my profile, my okay. name is Brittany Trimmer. So if I was a realtor, would you know if they like me? Right? 
Okay. All right, but if you, you just did that, that that just changed your name. It didn't change your law your username. Exactly. So what we think of it as username password. Yeah. That's not yeah. Password. That's true. Your username is just the tag that's associated with your account for people to find it. It's like a it's like a mini URL. So I, on Instagram.com slash be entry. Right. So I mean that's what I created back in 2008 when the dawn of the internet seemed to be happening from a social media perspective, right? So for you guys, like here from an Instagram perspective, you would want to change your name, but make sure that that username is the same as what it is on all your other business accounts. And when you that post, does that. that come through as being trim? Mm -hmm. So that's what it would show up at. Yeah. Right. So like my friend Brittany Cooper, that's her username. So it shows up as Cooper. She's currently in Antarctica. She's oh, very she adventurous. Just, oh, yeah, wow. She's like one of the most adventurous people I know. She also works for IBM. Bob, uh, I think I'm like M got three seven or MRG seven one seven five. Either one. I mean, I would. would you, I guess I. I think being in trim sounds cute. Barcelona. But unless you think someone knows you, they wouldn't be able to search you. Yeah, and that's not the point. Like they, people are going to. So if you search my name, it's still going to show up. Mm -hmm. so still would you recommend that the username include your full name and, oh, yeah, and sure. realtor? For sure. Like I said, I did this in 2008 when I had no idea what I was doing and nobody had any sort of theory around how to use this for business. Twitter wasn't even used for business. They didn't even have Facebook business pages when I made these usernames. So do you, does yours have realtor in your username? That's what we have to tell it. It's M mm -hmm. seven, but, but again, in my bio. Uh, it'd be very easy to know I guess, okay. who I was yeah. and what I do. So, like, mine says RMC at Movement Mortgage because there's not a lot of characters I can utilize. So, that just sounds for remarking for me. That's your little bio for Instagram? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's fine. What is the business use of Pinterest? And I know we're in a largely female yeah. profession. My understanding is Pinterest is like 90%. Pinterest is another search engine. Yeah. Um, Pinterest, just so you guys know, Pinterest's main goal is to be the visual Google. I mean, that's what their CEO has said. Is that their goal is to be the visual. So, Google. from from a realtor standpoint, how would you use Pinterest? The pictures of your pictures listings. of listings. Um, another way that you can utilize Pinterest. Um, I'm always looking for like cleaning things on Pinterest. But another thing that you guys can do, um, I had a I had a party where I had to make a bunch of food. That was my you to huh? You do Pinterest to get recipes. Oh, I got Pinterest for recipes all the time. I got Pinterest for recipes, outfit ideas, cleaning ideas. Um, but so. Did you type in real estate job spell? So I wouldn't really utilize it for that. What I would do is like kitchen design ideas. So if you have like a listing with a really great kitchen, utilize it and then tag that. Or it's got like really good organization. Right? So because that's what people are looking for. People are utilizing Pinterest as a place to like get ideas for home improvement projects, gardening ideas. So like for me on a personal level, like I use it for ideas for things that I want to do with my guest room or like my office or my living room, which I haven't really done a whole lot of recently. Um, but like, like my home sweet home board, it's just things that I would like to incorporate, like an ideal bathroom situation, right? Some ideas are like, you can, but like you can take photos of these different things in a property that you are in a listing property, like this shower, right? You link it back to your listing, is that what you're saying? You can link it back to your listing or back to your website. Would you say ideally or a use of 
social media would be to drive everything to your website. Yes. That's exactly what you want. So you need to have your own yeah. website. Or you can drive it back to Roy Wheeler. That's yeah. fine. Mm -hmm. Right? Would the business, Facebook business page qualify as your website? You can utilize it as your website. But well, the problem with that is, is if I click on, so like for this, what I would do if I were you guys is I would, if, if, even if it's a listing, you could do it for multiple listings and create a blog post, right, around bathroom design and things that are trending or popular. Because if I click on this, right, this is just taking me to that image, unfortunately. Well, what I would do if I was going to do that kind of thing, I would use your agent profile, loyalwilder.com forward slash Bob Hauser, yeah. mm -hmm. as your website. But then have your links, your Facebook, and, and those kind of links right there. So when they go there, visit me on Facebook, visit wow. me on Instagram, because it's literally a URL that you can post under your name. And mm -hmm. and if, if when you have listings, the listings will show up. If your testimonials show up, everything's there, and then you can incorporate around it. I mean, is there any limitation on the number of and not the right terminology, but number of pages you can have under your? I don't or think so. Uh, and the nice thing about that is. He talked to Chris about this. The nice thing about it is all the stuff we're doing, all the stuff that has Roy Wheeler Realty Company out there on the internet, you're going to pick up search engine optimization because you've got RoyWheeler.com in your URL. Mm -hmm. So RoyWheeler.com forward slash you know, Bob Hauser, when it clicks on that, uh, that in there. Yeah, I'm not using that one, Bob. Mm -hmm. Or Bob Bollinger or whatever. Isn't that correct though, Brittany? Yeah. All the Roy Wheeler Realty stuff that Chris is doing mm -hmm. and and whatever you get, you get the advantage of that uh, because you've got that in your your URL name. Yeah. So that's the usage case for interest. We digress. Sorry. Okay. No, no, that was that was cool. that's that's fine. Um, okay, so consistent user name also. Make sure that you are incorporating and creating branded hashtags. So, whether it's buy with Brittany, Brittany sells, Seville, right? So, what a branded hashtag does is it makes it so that anything that you are utilizing from a work perspective is easily found. It can also help build brand awareness. You can utilize, you can get your clients if you're at a closing, right? So, take a photo and tag using like bought with Brittany or Whatever that branded hashtag is. And how do you, do you just, you just you make create it a hashtag and then make it by doing that it becomes branded or do you yep. have to do some extra stuff? Nope. It becomes branded because you use it over and over again. Exactly. So well, this is something that you would use in every single post that you do that's related to work. And like if you're doing something on Twitter or Instagram or whatever and you put the hashtag in, you'll start seeing it's branded because it'll start popping up. You know, you'll type four or five letters and all of a sudden that trend of that brand will pop up. So like Movement Mortgage has, has we, we kind of said, okay, we're going to lay claim to hashtag my movement, right? So like, granted, other what people can utilize mean? this too. Lay, lay, I mean, Clay, do you have some? You just kind of overwhelm it with all of yes. your okay. stuff. You are it's out, it's like your website right. name. I, I wouldn't necessarily do like a UR like it like that, but for me, I'm trying to wrap mind around it over here. So like, I can't add a post from here. Um, but like, let me see. So like, my friends have a basically like a a, a food. Um, like they're all about. Food. Right. <laughs> really. Um, so they use hashtag rations in old fashioned, which yes, that's their username, but that they use that for every single thing that they do. Um, and then they also do like DMV foodie RBA foodie. They use a lot too. So I mean it's like it's so like if I click on rations on old fashions, like that hashtag. It's going to show me all of their posts. Okay. Have a library of everything you've done. Exactly. Okay. I mean, granted, people can find that on their account, but people tend to search hashtags more than they do accounts. 
but people aren't going to go to your account as much as they are going to go to a hashtag. So like you'll notice on my account, I have hashtag Great Dane because most of what I post about is my dog. So if you create the said hashtag and own it, so once it's out there in the cyber world, anybody can use that. Right. And, but if you call up whatever that unique hashtag is, you're going to find everybody. But it's not unique. Yeah. It's, right? But, like, but the difference is, is it depends, you have to use it in every single post that's related to work. That way, it's mostly your stuff that's popping up. Does that make sense? And encourage other people to use it. So, like, I don't tell the friends, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? Well, I think you want to search before you actually pick the one. You want to search, yeah, and make sure no one else has, you know, you. How do you search? Yeah, I was gonna say, how do you do it? How do you? Do so, so, if I want to search hashtag bot. So on our two posts. And she's a real estate agent. Oh, cool. Right? Mm -hmm. Can you search by the seven, please? Mm -hmm. Do you have it? Yep. No results found. Right. It's your space. Own it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, there's only four. Oh. Huh. Right? Granted, right? it's a real estate agent. In Rochester, New York. Rochelle, New York. But, like, I would, rather than Bob Sells, I would do. Um, Bob the Ripper. No, I do Bob sells Seville. Bad Bob sells. Mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> well, I'm bad at sell Seville on my website and email. So same thing. So Seville is my no, But like that's, but that's like what you would want to incorporate, right? Do you have to create it in Instagram, or can I just go to Facebook and put? You can hashtag use the hashtag whatever in, on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter. But here's the thing, if you type in that hashtag on Facebook, it's not going to pull an Instagram post, it's only going to pull in Facebook posts. They're all limited to whatever platform they're on. So if I use it on Instagram, it's going to pull all my Instagram, but put it on Facebook. Click on that. So no matter what platform you're utilizing, you want to make sure that you're using those hashtags. How about since Facebook owns Instagram, is there interoperability between your There is if you share from Facebook to or from Instagram to Facebook. Right, that just makes it easier, but it's still not going to show. It'll show like your Instagram posts because you posted them to Facebook, but that's it. Right, it's not going to show if your clients posted it to Instagram or not to Facebook. And is that only going to show what you included the hashtag in in the past, it's, or will it show everything you ever put on Facebook? It's only going to show whatever in the past has been utilized in the hashtag. So think of the hashtag as like okay. I am, I have created a smart folder on like or an email or a, a folder in my inbox, right? And for client Joe Schmo, everything that's related to Joe Schmo goes into that folder. Sure. Okay, and that's where that lives, is in that folder. It works exactly the same thing. It's like a folder. So if we wanted to do some on Instagram. I know I, I get others, but I'm not on there. You can just type it in Instagram.com and then go to that little person. So you, you can you can do that. So you would you would just go to Instagram.com and then sign up, or you can the ideal way to do it is to download the app on your phone. If you are new to Instagram, the best way to do it is to sign in, sign up using Facebook. The reason being twofold. One you're going to be using Facebook anyway. Two, it's one less password you got to remember. If we go into Facebook, if I'm going to do this today, we'll have we probably go to Facebook and ask for Instagram. Go to it. Is Download it? the Instagram app. Okay. It's a completely separate thing. Okay. That's the best way to do it. Okay. Um, so with those hashtags, you want to yes, create a branded hashtag, but also just have like a list of hashtags that you frequently use. You always want to make sure that you include a location hashtag, so hashtag Seville or Charlottesville, because people search those a lot. Um, and then also utilize hashtags that are relevant to whatever's in that photo. 
Um, so the easy boost way for you guys and you know this is a little bit of like planning. Remember how you're talking about planning ahead? This, this falls under that category, right? Think of hashtags that you're gonna frequently use. Typically it's like three, maybe more, but like your branded hashtag, hash, maybe it's like hashtag realtor or hashtag Seville, hashtag Seville Realtor. Search those hashtags on Instagram and just see what pops up. And then create a note on your phone and just put all the hashtags there that you use regularly. That way you're not having to remember and continue to rewrite them. Do you all understand what you meant by a note, a note on your phone? Copy and paste. Okay. Now, <laughs> what we want to be posting, all right? This is just something to keep in mind from a content perspective as you start to kind of think about, all right, well, what am I going to be doing? Local news and events, listings, obviously, they are our bread and butter. We, don't, we just don't want them to be the only thing that we're posting, right? Local news and events are always good because guess what people care about? Things that are going on in your local community, right? Um, photos and videos, market trends, shout outs to referral partners and local businesses. If you go somewhere and then get the best cup of coffee you've ever had in your life, take a photo of it, post it, tag the location, encourage other people to check it out, things like that. Um, just because people like it. People, exactly. People I'll tell you like what, it. And, and, and the, the, the people are so appreciative. I mean, when I, when my daddy's keeping the grandkids <laughs> and I can do it, I leave here and I go to Chick fil A and Bachelor's Square Mall and I get lunch. And then I I take a picture in some place and I highlight a particular employee or boy got my food in five minutes or whatever. And Will and, and Eric are so grateful. They'll see me and they'll say, Thank you so much for for doing that. that because they feel a little bit people forget that there's a Chick-fil-A in the Bachelor Square Mall. Mm -hmm. And they're good people. And uh, okay. so anyway, it's a yeah. great way yeah. of making people okay. feel the location is the location button on the Facebook. I didn't know that there was one. Oh, there. Sorry, I've never used that. Yeah, I use it a lot. So I use Royal Wheeler a lot. Even if I'm not at Royal Wheeler. No, that's fine. You don't have to be here as long as it's related to whatever you're doing. Yeah, you want to stay healthy. And then that personality is showing content, right? So um, there's a real estate agent that I work with out of DC, and she's, she's branded herself as the biking agent because everywhere she goes in DC, she's on a bike. So a lot of like what her posts include are on her bike. <laughs> she was the one who signaled uh, the president's motor to come here. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. The so, <laughs> I don't know if she was or not. I didn't hear about she that. She was. She's the, no, he used to. Wouldn't, wouldn't have been a big business. No, <laughs> but yeah. it's a horrible business. But, no. Okay. So, um, incorporate that. Best times to post. This is also something else that you may want to consider. Really, it's any time during 9 to 5. Um, but 11 a.m., 2 p.m., and 4.30 p.m. kind of be peak hours. You can check your Facebook page insights guys, and if you have an Instagram business account, those insights to see um, what, excuse me, when your audience is on. But really just pay attention. I worked with an agent who um, came from the restaurant industry. Guess when she was most active on social media? Late at night. Middle of the night. Yeah. Between the hours of 1 a.m. and 4 a.m. Did she have much traffic? Yeah, no, she did. She people like Everybody that she worked with, she worked, her primary clients were people that she knew in the restaurant industry. Sure. Guess when they got off work? Yeah, 2 a.m. 4 a.m. Mm -hmm. Middle of the night. And I don't know if you've ever really hung out with people in the restaurant industry, but they knock off and they go party hardy. Spot so they're checking, around. they're checking their social media accounts in the middle of her. And for her, that's when she was getting a lot of her messages from folks. So that's when she started posting and making sure that she was in front of them. Okay. So as an agent for 2019, we want to make sure that we are engaging Right? If you are not currently doing that, just make sure that you start implementing that. B 
be consistent in your posting. Don't post once and then forget about it for a month and then go back and do it. Right? We need to be posting consistently throughout the week. Even if it's just once a week, we got to start somewhere. Um, but create yourself some goals that are smart goals, something that's easily attainable, right? So if you're not posting very frequently right now, just make a goal of posting once a week for the year. That's it. It doesn't have and work towards achieving that. Is there too much? Posting five times a day is too much. Once a day too much? No. We have a video. I keep hearing the video is our video. Um, Facebook has actually been fudging those numbers. Photos are still performing better. People engage with photos more than they do anything, mostly because we don't have the attention span to watch a video, or people don't um, people don't subtitle the video, and if that's the case, then people just skip right over it. A lot of times, people are watching Facebook videos because where they are work, so they can't actually listen to it. Um, so. Photos are always are, are still really good. Video can be good. Facebook Live isn't really as great um, as previously thought. So you're better off recording a video, subtitling it, and uploading it than doing live. Uh, video on Instagram. Because we never got a minute. Yeah. Video on Instagram is the same sort of concept. You can still do it. Um, but if it's not subtitled, you know, it just depends. Um, Instagram is a completely different animal in that regard, but with, you're better off utilizing Instagram stories for video, my personal opinion, than the actual feed. Okay, and don't forget to ask for reviews. Again, we've already talked about this, but people work with both people that like, so just keep that in mind. Um, we are running low on time, so I'm kind of going to just breeze through some of these things with Facebook. Um, I have um, when it comes to how you're going to utilize Facebook, who here still does open houses pretty regularly? What? Open houses. Are you guys doing open houses? I haven't done many, but I post them all the ones that I have. Okay. One thing that I recommend incorporating is like a virtual open house. A lot of times when we do open houses, how many people come to these things? It varies. I've had very successful ones and some that aren't, right? So one thing that you can do is prior to the open house, you can do like a teaser video, letting people know that the open house is coming up and kind of show off something. Another thing that you can do too is do a virtual open house. And you can do like a Facebook live for that, but I would do that in, you know, let people know ahead of time, hey, I'm going to be going live, we're going to be doing a virtual open house for this. Um, because it also lives on Facebook as a video, so people can see it after the fact. I actually had a house two doors down for me get sold that way to a guy in California whose son was going to MCD Medical School. All right. So what is a virtual? It's literally, make sure you lock the doors, obviously. The live stream. It's a live stream. You just go live on Facebook and show people the house. Live. Live. Okay. Yeah. Facebook live. Yeah. Right? You could do it on YouTube and just link it, right? You could do it on YouTube and link it as well. Okay. No, but Brittany's making a good point. Don't do it live. You know, like if you're in a vacant property, you need to be very careful from a safety and security standpoint that you're not opening yourself up for that. So. If you've got a partner with you or you know you've got jay doing it with you or yeah. whatever the case may be that's a different story and you actually show and here's here's jay Hominick from moving morgan too if you have questions about financing yeah here so, so that it, it shows that you're not alone yeah. uh, but what you can do with the virtual and i think you'd agree with this is you do your open house and then right at the end you do a, a live posting video of it as you're walking out the door because it's the same yeah. thing, you know. Hey, if you didn't, if you didn't get a chance to get here today, I just want to give you a quick glimpse of 
the amazing family room and kitchen of this house. If you'd like more information about it, please reach out to me. Yeah. Um, and then you're out the door, so you're not, that, that yeah. it's posted, it's out there, but you're not putting yourself in a position where you're saying, hey, I'm here all by myself. Yeah. Yeah, make sure, that's what I'm saying. Like, if you're going to do something like that, make sure that you either travel in a pack or lock the door, do something for security purposes. Um, so. The guy in um, Maryland recently went to buy a house and he got killed in his mom. Mm -hmm. Oh, so there is a certain predation using live streams to find targets in the whole area. Anyway, yeah, that's just my Michael. <laughs> I mean, look, I do think worst case. That is one of the things with model homes is usually there's something always in it. Yeah. And it's one person. It's, yeah, we sit and touch. Especially now that it gets darker earlier. Mm -hmm. A lot of my female coworkers are fearful of that. They just they pull their car as close as they can to the house and they lock the door as soon as they come. Yeah. That's okay. Um, so, I don't know why they make you guys sit alone in those. They should always be in a pack. Wow, you should never sit anywhere alone. Yeah. It's, hard, it's hard to find somebody to sit there who doesn't want to share information. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's very family. Yeah, it's yeah. 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 Okay, um, so consider incorporating that. And these are just some, some content ideas and things like that. And ads on occasion, it's not something you need to do regularly, but brand awareness ads can be really good just for giving these guys a little bit of a boost. You need to consider spending like a hundred dollars a month or every other month if you want um, on just letting people know, hey, I'm gonna be boosting here. Boost it on your business page. I actually don't really recommend boosting too much. Those don't perform as well as like an actual ad. Boosting, what's that mean? So okay. There are two different Is that like you become a premier Zillow agent and your no. picture popped up? That's a different. Um, so like, they charge for it. Okay. It's only for that Pretty cheap advertising. Yeah. This is it, but I have a guy's business on this day. So, like with a boosted post, it's just a button that you push. Yeah. You're limited in the audience. But Facebook also has like an ad function where you can create ads. And you choose your brand awareness and reach, right? So for you guys, you can get people to your website. Brand awareness is just getting you in front of as many eyeballs as possible in the particular area that you choose. But when it comes to this, right, I'm just gonna do this as an example. <coughs> Make sure it's like you, you have to be careful because there's not a whole lot that we can do um, so, Charlottesville, Virginia, great. Don't mess with the age, don't mess with gender, don't mess with language, but you can add some interests. So, I would look for people who are interested in Zillow, let's say. Right? Because what is, what's going to happen if they're interested in Zillow? We're going to show up. On well, it, it's, all, it's not going to show up on Zillow, but if they're interested in Zillow, they're likely to be looking for houses. Right? Um, so I can target people who are interested in Zillow. Um, home improvement. Oh, so you can just add one. Mm -hmm. Right, so um, Home Depot. Lowe's. Um, you know. So I'm not sure what the ad would be. Yeah. So for well, I see them on my on Facebook. Um, and I buy stuff on them. No, two, two. So like this is one that I made for one of our loan officers, right? Get to know your local home buying professional. Right. And it just links back to his Facebook page to get some likes. So when you create said ad, right. it's pulling people that somewhere out there are searching 
and then not searching it's targeting people on facebook who fit this description so they have to be in charlottesville they have to fit these age ranges they have to have at least one of these interests and then how, does, where, how do you how does it determine cost you give them a dollar amount you tell you, them how much you want to spend and that's it i know that you could be up there teaching them I don't know that I've had but I think cost This is just a little bit more robust and it doesn't stay on your Facebook page, it just goes into people's feeds. Right. Right. We got about five minutes. Okay. And how did you get to that page? When you're right. When you're on Facebook, you just click on the little drop down create ads. Okay. So I'm not going to Instagram. This took a little bit longer than I had anticipated. Um, I do want to talk to you guys though about how you need to be utilizing your phone. If you are not, if you're still just posting to your social media accounts from your desktop and waiting until you're at a computer, we gotta stop that. We gotta start moving ahead. So start utilizing this handy little personalized computer on your person at all times. Create original content. Take photos, record a video from your phone. Another thing that you want to make sure that you're doing is, um, you know, sharing it before you forget. That's one of the biggest things that happens is we're like, oh, I took all these photos of this event. I, I, I talked to my loan officer at the administrator about this all the time. Oh, I did that event. Okay, well, where's the proof? Oh, they're all—it's all on my phone. And it's a week gone by and you still haven't posted it, right? So it's no longer timely and relevant. So make sure that the content that you have, you're posting real time. And also utilize it to engage with customers. Guess how most of your agents, your, your, agents, your customers want to be talked to nowadays? Via text messaging. Right? Don't be afraid to utilize that. Um, and then also organize your phone so that your apps are in folders so that they're easy to find. Just like all there. It was a time where I couldn't see them very well. But just... Right. If you have like a folder that's called social media and you put all your social media apps in that, you can just tap on that and find them in that one folder. Versus it being like, oh my God, where's my Instagram? And you're like sorting through eight pages of apps. Um, okay, so apps that you want to make sure that you have to make your life a little bit easier, the Pages app for Facebook so that you can easily um, access your Facebook business page and post to it while on the go. InstaQuote is an app that lets you guys create your own motivational quote. Snapseed is good for editing photos. Adobe Spark is one that you can utilize to create your own um, like Facebook post, kind of like, um, so like if you have a listing and you want to put a just sold banner on it, you can use that. Another app that's really good, and I don't have it on here and I don't know why I put it on here, is Canva, C-A-N-V-A. I actually personally use that for a lot of my um, design stuff, so incorporate that as well. Hootsuite you can use to post to multiple platforms. And then Feedly you can utilize is an app or Flipboard. It's something that you can utilize to share content to your um, social media accounts. Feedly, F-E-E-D-L-Y. Um, and, and that's just like a news gathering. So you can utilize if you have the opportunity to spend 30 minutes a day on social media, most of your time should be spent engaging. You got to pick two platforms, Facebook and Instagram. Um, plan ahead by creating a content calendar and building a strategy around like, what is it I'm posting, why am I posting this. Schedule content if you can using an app like Hootsuite and then post from your phone. Do you have a recommendation on a good video editing program? Like if you yes. take a video. I will over. talk to you guys about that in our one-on-one -on -one that starts now because I know that other people need to start. 
I don't like to choose young. Do you, are you transferring? I have to. I originally had a before schedule change. Are you are you honoring that schedule? No. You have a new schedule. Thank you very informative. No, we have some. You got Taylor J on that? Yeah. Are you in Bob's house? Yeah. Yeah, I got you at two o'clock. Okay. Okay. I'm glad you got because I will say I didn't know that, but I'll be back at two. That'd be great. I bet it's already written. Yes. Can we change you to the slide? Yeah, of course. You live in Rich Richmond, Richmond? I do. You live here Cherry Town? I live in Battery Park, so I'm closer to downtown. Near the river? No, I am north of the river. I'm technically north side of the river. Let me grab my Boy, stuff. I have a lot of questions for you. <laughs> Brittany, thank you. You guys are so very welcome. I'm gonna